All right, so here we are inside of main stage and I'm actually using my Key Studio concert file here. You don't have to use it, but if you want to, you can actually download a free version of this over on my website. Check the link in the description of the video. First thing we wanna do is add a new patch. So I'm gonna click this plus button in the patch list and we have our new untitled patch here. And then we wanna add a, uh, a channel strip to that patch. So I'm gonna click over here, this plus button in the channel strips area. And we want a software instrument channel strip. Let's click create. And then we wanna add an instrument to that channel strip. So in the instrument drop down, let's go ahead and navigate down to the sampler. Let's choose the stereo version. And then we need to load up a sample. So we'll click this factory default drop down, navigate down to factory, and then synthesizers, synth pads, and then fat jupy dark pad. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock down the volume here to Let's go down to negative 20 and then just give you a demo of how it sounds uh, stock. So already a pretty cool pad sound. It's one of my favorite samples to use. Now in the pitch, we're not gonna change the, the tune or the fine, the filter. Let's go ahead and uh, increase that to 51%. We're gonna let some more of those high frequencies through. The resonance, I'm gonna take all the way down to zero. The drive, I'm gonna knock down to 10%. And we're not actually going to use filter two, so this filter blend area doesn't matter either. And then let's actually expand the details pane. And let's change the transpose value to zero. So we're shifting everything up by 12 semitones. Uh, let's change, let's see here, let's change the unison to two voices. So it's a little bit of a thicker sound. And yeah, that's all I'll do there. We can minimize that details area. And then I'm actually going to knock out uh, all these things from the mod matrix. So I'll click the first one in the list and click this minus button a few times, clear that out. And now we're going to add some modulation to that filter one. So let's go ahead and add an instance here to the mod matrix with this plus button. The source, I want to modulate with my mod wheel. So we'll choose, you guessed it, mod wheel. And the target, like I said earlier, filter one uh, cutoff. Okay, so let's figure out how much we want to actually open this filter by. So what I like to do here is I put my mod wheel all the way up at 100%. I'll do that now. And now I can increase this amount percent slider. And then I can just use my ear to listen to see what the max uh, brightness I want for this sound to have. So I'll play here and then increase that slider. So something like that, 15.7% or so, I like that. So now as I open and close my mod wheel, I'm opening and closing that filter. And that lets me play dynamically as maybe as the song gets bigger, I can open that filter up and add some more of those bright frequencies, some more energy to the sound. Let's actually add though, so as that filter opens up, the sound gets quite a lot uh, louder. And I want to sort of balance that out. So we're going to add another instance of modulation here. Plus button again. We're going to use the mod wheel as the source. And this time I want to target the volume. And so as I open that mod wheel up, I actually want the volume to come down. So this time I'm going to uh, do a negative value. So you can do that same uh, sort of trick where you play and then open the mod wheel all the way and then adjust the slider sort of to uh, taste. In this case though, I already know what I'm going for. It's like 46.4%. And you can actually see here on the sampler. So as we uh, add modulation, we actually add this cool little orange area here. So you can see this over here on the uh, filter one cutoff. You can see it on the volume. And as we play, there's a little white dot that shows up on those areas. And then as we adjust that modulation, that dot follows along. So watch as I play, check out this cutoff area and check out the volume and see what happens when I adjust that mod wheel. So just a kind of helpful tip if you are ever curious on exactly what's going on with the modulation there. And we're going to add one more type of modulation to the filter. Uh, so let's click the uh, plus button again. And then this time we're actually going to use uh, something different than mod wheel. So we're going to use key. And what key is, it, is it takes the keyboard, the whole keyboard from left to right, and then it says, hey, on this far left area, we're going to adjust the filter by this much. 
And on the right area of the keyboard, those higher notes, we're going to actually adjust uh, the whatever we're targeting by the inverse of that. So it sounds a little confusing. I'll show you in practice how that works. So we're going to target again uh, the filter one cutoff. And then we'll invert that. And then I am going to add 24.6%. Uh, so once again, look here. You can actually see what happens as I, you know, change the slider here. So back to 24.6. So what I'm doing here with this inverted and adding. So as I play on the right hand side of the keyboard on those higher notes, um, as I adjust that cutoff filter, we're actually going to uh, allow it to pass through more versus when I play on the left hand side and I'm opening up that filter, we're not going to open it as much as we are on the right hand side of the keyboard. So in this case, it's because I don't want those lower notes to uh, be fed through the filter as much as I want those right hand notes to be. And then the next thing we're going to adjust is the envelope one amp. So that's the attack, decay, sustain, and release values. And this is just uh, adjusting how the volume of the sound is impacted over time. So for attack, I'll set that to 51 milliseconds. So when we play a note on the keyboard, it's going to take 51 milliseconds to reach that max uh, volume level. And then we're going to set our sustain value. So that's as we continue to hold the notes on the keyboard, we're going to drop down in sound and we're going to drop down to 57.1%. And then our decay value is the time that it takes us to drop down to that value. So in this case, I'll just leave it here at 977 milliseconds. And then finally, our release value. So when we take the, our hands off the keyboard, it's how long it takes the sound to fade out. So let's go ahead and set that to 327 milliseconds. Now let's go ahead and play. And so I actually messed something up earlier. As you can see, no sound was coming through. I inverted the key, so let's not invert that. There we go. Now we actually have sound. <laughs> so yeah, turn off that invert setting or else you're going to be like, where'd all my sound go? Okay, so let's play, let's, let's hear that uh, sound is shaped. So, sounds cool, it's actually a pretty uh, quick attack. So let's add another instance to our mod matrix. And this time we're gonna use our velocity as the source, and that's how hard we play the keys. And then we're gonna be targeting this attack value in our envelope one. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna find Envelope one, where are you? There you are. And we're gonna target that attack value. So that's this one here. And now this one is what we wanna invert. So let's invert that. And then we're going to actually add 869 uh, milliseconds there. Now what we just did is we changed the value of this attack value based on how hard we play the keys. And the way it's set now is if we play softer, Oh, we're going to have a bigger attack value all the way up to 800 and well, an additional 869 milliseconds on top of that 51. So it's going to be a more a smoother fade in of the sound. And if we play harder, it's going to go more towards this 51 millisecond value. So you can hear how that sounds now. So I'm going to play soft here. You can hear how that sound ramps in versus if I play hard. And then one last thing I want to actually do in this envelope one area, we're going to change this velocity slider itself. And this is going to be how sensitive the sound is to velocity. So if we put it all the way at zero, it doesn't matter how hard or how soft we play. The volume of the sound is going to be the same no matter what. And we don't want that. If we put it all the way up at the top, it's going to be a very sensitive. So as we play real quiet, you might not even hear the sound. If we play loud or like really hard, it's going to be uh, we'll, we'll hear the, the max value. But for a pad sound, we kind of want something in the middle. So let's go ahead and just go with 24 and a half decibels. And that's it for our sampler instrument here. We're not going to do anything in the envelope two or with the LFO one. So we can close out of that. And probably the first effect that you add almost all the time is going to be an EQ. So let's open that up. Let's click in here and add a an EQ, specifically the channel EQ. First thing I want to do is make sure all of our bands are turned off or turned on. If you turned them off, we don't have an EQ. So turn on this band, turn on this band, make sure all of yours lit up, have colors. And then I want to adjust in this right hand side here, the amount that we can actually see. So let's right click that and then change the value to linear 60 decibels. 
And then I also want to turn off this Q couple setting. And then we're going to adjust every single one of these bands. I'm not going to make you sit through that though. But essentially we're going to go through, we're going to adjust all of the, uh, the hertz, the frequency values. We're going to adjust all of the gain settings. And then we're going to adjust all of the resonance settings. I'm going to do that right now. I'll fast forward through this part and then I'll just show it on the screen. So you can just pause the video, copy those settings. Okay, so we've got all those settings copied down. I'll make sure that yours match. Let's just listen to how that sounds. So it's way quieter, right? So let's go back to our sampler real quick and let's just change the amp, right? Let's go ahead and put that at, uh, let's put that at zero decibels. And then let's listen to how that sounds. Still a little quiet. So let's just add, let's say 7.8 decibels of gain here to our EQ. Sounds pretty good. Next thing we're going to add is a chorus effect. So we're going to click in our effects area, come down here to modulation, chorus. And then let's go ahead and set this up. So with a rate of 0.767, an intensity of 20% and a mix of 30%. And then let's add our reverb in below that. So click here, let's go down to reverb, silver verb, and then the settings here. So pre-delay, let's set that to seven milliseconds. Reflectivity, sort of a brightness of the reverb, 51% is good. Size, 122. Density over time, 77. Low cut, let's go 340. High cut, let's go 8600 hertz. Modulation, 0.65 is cool. Phase, 50. Intensity, let's go 0.4. And then our output area, let's go with a value of 84 for dry and a value of 75 for wet. because It's gonna be a nice uh, drenched in reverb sound. And I think that about wraps it up. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna open and close the filter, just give you a taste of how this pad is going to sound. Like it. It's a really cool warm pad sound. Now, if you wanted, you could throw in uh, like a piano channel strip on top of that and I'll layer that together. I'm actually going to show you something cool though. So since we're in Key Studio, uh, like I said earlier, you can download the free version of this. You're actually going to get these exact sounds in that free download. So might want to go do that if you want to. You can open up these uh, sounds in Logic as well. So I'm going to add in another patch and I'm going to load up a Key Studio sound. So we're actually going to load up the same pad that we just made, but different version in Key Studio here. So I'm going to navigate to Patch Browser, Slot 1 Patches. We're going to go with Pads. Now, if you got the free version, you're, you're going to only have uh, some of these pads. You're probably only Basic Pad and I think one other pad. But in this case, load up that Basic Pad sound. You're going to have it even in the free version. And so something really cool here. Same kind of pad sound. But we also have all these controls, right? All these mappings. So if I, if I click on one of these mappings, just look at how many mappings uh, there are for some of these sounds, right? So these are all already pre-dialed in for you and they let you shape the sound in real time. So if we wanted to add more reverb to the sound, let's, let's say we want to add like a shimmer reverb to that. We'll just click the shimmer button there. And now our reverb shimmering, let's say we want to throw on some side chain. We can actually dial in how much we want. So let's throw a heavy side chain on there. Or if we want to change the filter, so instead of controlling it with the mod wheel, we could actually set it to closed, so it's always closed, no matter what we want to do with the mod wheel, or halfway open, or all the way open. I'll leave it at mod wheel for now. And we can actually use this uh, this octave chord button, right? So right now it's set at octave, so when we click on octave chord, it's going to add an octave to every note we play. We can do other cool stuff though, like have it play chords. So let's say we're playing in the key of G, we'll set that to uh, a value of G. And then we just play one note in the left hand. It's going to generate entire chord with just one note. 
one can actually see. Uh, I think it's this one, but we're playing here. So yeah, we're playing a G, a G, a G, and a D. So it's a really cool way if you have a whole bunch of sounds layered in and you don't want to have that pad going everywhere, you can just, some single notes in the left hand, you're going to play your nice uh, chords underneath. And of course, it's Key Studios, so we can transpose to whatever we want. We're playing in G, let's say we want to play in the key, the, the wonderful, difficult key of G flat. Just do that. Now I'm playing in the key of G, I'm playing chords with one note and I'm hearing it in G flat. So. Pretty cool deal. Now let's say we want to do something even cooler, right? Let's say we want to throw in a piano on top of that. So we'll just add another patch. Let's load up another key studio sound. Slot two this time, right? We have our pad in slot one. We want piano in slot two. Come to slot two, pianos. Let's go with all pianos. And if you're using the free version, you're just going to have access to, uh, I believe it's the classic piano. Yep, it's the free version here. So now we have a cool piano sound. It's got mappings already all set up for you. But let's say we want to layer our pad with our piano. Well, super easy. We just come over here in our patch list, select both of these patches in blue, right click on them and choose new patch from selected patches. You can see here we actually have this new untitled patch. Let's go ahead and rename it piano and pad. And as you can see here, slot one, pad, slot two, piano. Let's actually turn our pad volume down a bit here. Let's add some shimmer in there. We'll add a cool uh, chord. I'm gonna play in the key of G. I'm gonna hear the output in the key of A. And then you can just play around with that. So super quick way, uh, if you're trying to throw in sounds on the fly, it works really well. We've got mappings on our piano. Let's say we wanted to play like chords in the left hand, playing in the key of G again. Start on our octave chord button. And now single notes in the left hand. And then we're free in our right hand to play whatever we want. So we can just do, it's just uh, an octave in the left hand and just playing notes in the right hand. Okay, so I hope that you found this video helpful. We made an awesome warm pad and also showed you some cool stuff in Key Studio. Like I said, these sounds, these mappings, this concert file, totally free. You can check it out in uh, the link in the video description. If you want to pick up a paid version, you're free to do that as well. You're going to get uh, over 100 sounds, all with mappings dialed in for you. But if you just want a bunch of cool free sounds, go pick it up. I'm Ryan. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Catch you later. Subscribe, like, all that cool stuff. Bye.